So guys, welcome to Carbon Magazine uh, interviews. Today we are joined by rugby lifestyle fitness influencer, John Okafor. So how are you doing? I'm well, thank you for having me on here. Uh, it's the first time I've done anything like this before. So I'm slightly a bit nervous, but um, thanks for having me. A sweet bro, I'm nervous as well. Let's go, let's get into it. So <laughs> the main theme of this interview is um, talk about keeping fit and staying in shape through lockdown. But first, like, let's give our um, audience like a bit of information about you. So, so I've seen from your page, like you play a bit of rugby um, and you're really interested like, in your fitness. And obviously look at you, like you're in shape, my guy. So uh, how did you like get into like, training and fitness? <laughs> so like, did that come from like your, your past in rugby and sports? Like, did that influence you? Yeah, absolutely. With rugby, you spend a lot of time in the gym and for me, once I discovered I enjoyed going to the gym, I liked working out, then uh, I liked enjoying training and stuff like that. So one had one hand fed the, fed the other. So if it weren't for rugby, I wouldn't have gone into the gym. And because I play rugby, I need to stay in the gym. So it, it pairs up quite nicely. So that's how I really got into it. Sweet. So I suppose like weight training in any field of sport is really important. And I mean, for your overall health as well. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's important just, like you said, overall health and stay in shape. Remember, like, you don't need to be, you know, jacked up with, a, 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 like, 250 pounds of muscle, six-pack yeah. abs. All that. No, that's just, you know, that looks good for social media. That's just, like, that's for Instagram, isn't it? That gets the clips, that there's a like. However, in terms of actual general day-to-day -day health, you know, working out a little bit, if there's a little bit of cardio, a little bit of weight training is so so important and it's all about just getting like a nice healthy balance or anything it's very true i think even like doing a bit of weight training uh, any form of training just getting out and being physical as much as it helps your like your physical attributes it's your mental as well i find doing any any form of exercise really helps that sort of aspect um so i saw on your instagram you have a partnership with beast and bulk is yeah. that right so how how did that come about how did that first start so again, with like with social media, it's the power of social media. You can really like connect with different brands, different companies. You know, once you once you if you're making good stuff and you know you guys connect, it can uh, open a lot of doors. Like Beast and Bulk for me, one of the most important things because I'm a high performance athlete as well as someone that like is into fitness and does fitness content. I'm also a rugby player, so getting good source of like protein or supplement companies that I can trust that if I were to have a drug test, I wouldn't fail was so, so important. Hence why Beast and Bulk came into the equation. They have an informed sport. So like all their stuff is tested for any banned substances. So I can take any of their supplement, sub, supplements across any of their oh, lines. Yeah. I'm not going to fail a drug test because of what they put in their products. So that's how that came about. And we've been working together for about six weeks um, when the gym oh, nice, opened. So recent. Yeah, really, really recent. I've only just signed them. When the gym's open, they want to do like um, a few shoots and like an athlete meet day where they're based. So I'm really, really looking forward to it. And I think that as a company, we could really like, we could go, we can really go places. So I'm really, really excited to be working with them. Mate, that sounds amazing. That sounds really good. So what sort of um, products do they offer? Is it just like uh, pre-workouts, uh, protein powder, creatine, that sort of thing? Or So at the moment, they've got, pre-workout so they've got a pre-workout gel and uh, whey protein they've also got a vegan range and something i really like about their products is that the packaging is fully recyc recyclable so oh, wow. um so you literally you just literally have to clean it out um i, I think the package don't don't hold me to this i think their package is made from recycled materials anyway so in terms of like being environmentally sound and I can trust the product. It's, it, they, they, they're hitting a lot of uh, key aspects in like the modern way we're trying to live. I think that works really well with you as an athlete. That's a really great company to, to like. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you were saying, like, there's a lot of like smoke and mirrors and a lot of BS that influencers uh, promote. Like they, they, they'll get said something they would like, you know, post it, story it, do a couple posts, never, and it's never to be seen or heard of again. But for me, if someone sends me something, I don't like it. I say, look, mate, thanks, but no thanks. Like, keep keep your money or, or yeah, keep it no, I'm, I'm not going to work with you. You know, so it's for, for me, if I'm ever going to work with a brand, 
like Beats and Bob, for example, one, I actually have to use their product and actually like their product they're using. Um, Cause I don't want to sell something or promote something to my following. I'm very aware of my following. It's a lot of young lads, you know, yeah. that one actually believe in and two, I'm just trying to like collect coin. Like I want to be completely honest mm. and transparent in what I do. So like, if I'm if I'm using a product, people say, "Oh, John uses this," and I can say, "Look, I use this regularly in terms of in term in like with the protein. I use this protein shake in combination with my diet, and boom, stuff like that. No fads, no BS, and I try and be as transparent with people as I can." Man, I, re- I feel like that works really well with you as an athlete. That's a really great company to, to like yeah. working with. That's sick. Um, also, in addition to this, and like looking on your Instagram. I saw that you were re- represented by I'm with TDB, is that yeah. right? And um, yeah. and you were rugby pass host. Could you like just explain yeah. to our audience um, what this is and like what it means for you as an athlete? Like, so I'm with TDB is um, the rugby agency I'm with. So prior to prior to this, um, I've obviously played um, professional rugby before. I was at Harlequins from 18 to 19, straight oh, out of yeah. school. Yeah, so I've I've, I've like I've, I've represented the club in a fully professional game, um, at the stoop. So for me, like that's always been like the long term goal. Once I graduate, can I get back to it? So I've been training. It's a shame because of COVID. Because yeah, it's just a bummer, I'm, isn't it? yeah, I haven't been able to play any rugby for years, so clubs haven't been able to look at me. Hence why I've been working on other stuff outside of rugby. In terms of that, that's how the rugby stuff, rugby pass, uh, partnership came about. So they're a social media platform. In terms of they just talk all things rugby, one of the biggest platforms I think in the world in terms of a rugby based platform. I think they've got 170k on Instagram and 75k on YouTube. Don't hold me to that. I'm really bad at this. That's sick, but man, that's uh, cool. it's a massive platform. Like they yeah. have, they have Dylan Hartley, Simon Zebo, all on their team. So. For me, like this is a great platform to be involved with, and that came about through my YouTube. Like they, one of their guys, literally stumbled across my videos, and like literally just watched all of them and said, "You know what? Yeah, we want him on board." And uh, I've been working with them throughout the Six Nations, doing their fan zone, which is oh, basically, wow. yeah, it's a bit more, it's a civilized Arsenal fan TV, basically. That sort of thing. Where, That's so cool, though, man. I didn't know yeah. how you got into it. Yeah, and literally we sit for about 20 minutes and we just talk about, I'll, I'll talk about the England game or, and the Welsh commentary, commentary, we'll talk about the Welsh game and Scotland game and Irish games. And it's, it's been really, really good. And it's, it's really, really going well. And like that's, again, taking my like social media. Yeah, so it just elevates it, right? Yeah, literally to another level in terms of like a proper, more mainstream audience and stuff. And I've been like doing their TikToks and stuff. That's so, so cool. I'm really, yeah, I'm really, really excited to where the next nine or so months left of the year is going to go. Like, I think we're going to really go some places. Because that sort of thing really helped you, like, elevate your platform and, and your followers, as you said. And even as an athlete, like, getting that recognition and that um, that extra, like, viewpoint and more audience, it's just, it just really great for you. So this yeah. kind of stem, the next question kind of stems into this. Um, so I've seen, like, you you have a YouTube channel. Um so you started your YouTube channel. So what sort of content, Mike, are you posting on there? And what sort of, what are you thinking about for the future? Is that the main thing you want to do with like your so, channels, YouTube or so with the YouTube stuff channel you do at the is, So the YouTube channel, my sort of content is around fitness, rugby and like my general day-to-day life. So oh, at the moment, a lot of my stuff is just staying fit and university work. Then obviously when, YouTube, um, when rugby comes back, i incorporate my rugby training games and whatnot so it's more like a diary of my life and yeah, you like get an to see into your life yeah, yeah exactly and people can follow the story because ultimately the aim is to get back to playing professional rugby and it's just more of a, like a like a log of bait of my life from rugby life uni post yeah. uni you know and yeah, like the YouTube channel's going really well. Like the last six months, I've probably gained the best part of nearly 600 subscribers, wow. hit 1K. So like now, like the YouTube channel's like in a place where I, I think it's the first time ever I was like, hold on a minute, um, this could be something. This could yeah, be something yeah, yeah. really big. 
That's impressive, man. I, lo- I love that. I love that as well. How you'll be able to like go from different platforms as well. It's really great. Um, so now kind of like on from it to, from you and your past, more to like now the main discussion. So how are you keeping shape through lockdown? Like what sort of things are you even doing? I can't lie to you. I absolutely despise home workouts. <laughs> yeah. I, I like the price of the weights that I need. So if you see me on like Instagram, I'm not a small guy. So like yeah. the sort of weights I I need for a lot of my exercises will be more from right? 70, 80, 70, 80 kilos at bit like entry point. So just sourcing those sort of weights. Like I had a look and like 150 kilos worth of weight and a barbell was setting me back nearly Not 700 money. Yeah, I was like, I, I can't really justify spending that sort of money. Secondly, I'm a student, so I don't really afford, I can't really afford it. Yeah. So in terms of that, it's been tough. And I tried to get into the, like, the body weight stuff and for me to feel anything where I thought it was working, I was doing like reps of 75 a That's set. That's crazy. That's actually yeah. crazy. <laughs> I, re- I was like, okay, this is just not practical. So in terms of keeping fit, I've just been doing a lot of cardio-based work. Yeah. I think this is the time really I've looked at like training cardio properly. Obviously because uh-huh. of rugby, I still, I've been doing cardio and I need to do it. But actually saying, look, I'm going to do six weeks blocks of proper intense cardio. You uh-huh. know, um, and that's how I've really been staying fit. As a result, I've lost quite a bit of weight since yeah. January. I've lost... Uh, Seven, nearly eight kilos. Wow, what did you wear at the minute? <laughs> so, um, I went from 121 to 114. 121? Yeah, I was 121 kilos. Um, which, uh, how tall are you? Six, six. Oh, okay, wow. <laughs> Big guy. Uh, what position do you play uh, in rugby? Uh, back row. What's that, sorry? Second row, back row. Oh, okay. I, I, my cousin plays rugby quite a high level as well. Um, I usually talk to him about it, but that's that's sick, man. Um, yeah. In the gym, like, what are your numbers then? I'm really interested now. Big guy, like, what can you um, bench, like? <laughs> as soon as people talk about fitness, what is the yeah, first question? <laughs> literally numbers off, off the bat. <laughs> so, for a squat, my free rep PB is 230 kilos. Wow. My bench PB is 165 kilos. So they're the two things. I've never actually done a deadlift. So when the gym's open again, I think I'm going to train my deadlift. That is very impressive. Yeah. See what I can get. But in terms of bench and squat, those are my numbers. Mate, you should give, you should give the uh, NFL combine a go, mate. I reckon you'd give that a spin. I mean, honestly, I'm not the first person to say this. Everyone keeps saying, like, to try it. And I feel like it'd make a great YouTube video. It would. Mate, and, you could do, I, like, it could be like a video idea. Like, maybe, like, um, try and a few of those workouts. Like, yeah. you think I'd, that'd be a sick video. You got the physique for it as well, 100%. Yeah. Like, I used to be a sprinter as well. And my, like, PB, like, my best 100 meter time ever was uh, 10.99. Yeah. yeah, At yeah. 6'6, 120 kg. So I was, at the time, I was about six kilos lighter than I was now. Oh, right, six, okay. six, yeah. yeah. So I was, I, was, I was a bit, I was a bit lighter. A bit lighter I, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. How much weight? So if I actually said, you know what, let's train and lose a little bit of weight, I'll be I'm really close. I'll probably be running around like the low elevens if I try that again. Wow man. So um with them are just an all round athlete. Yeah, just a freak, genetic freak, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but with um, so obviously like it's kind of tough because obviously we're saying like gyms are closed and that, and it's hard to like just get those lifts in. And a big guy like you, like you need to do heavy compound lifts. But for just the average guy, like, do you have any tips of like keeping motivated because it's really tough when the gym's on out to just get going yeah exactly i think that's the toughest thing to stay motivated because you know you might have a good two weeks where i'm like okay cool you get into into it then another two weeks where you just can't do it so for Mm me i would say stay motivated especially now we're only just under three weeks away from the gym's opening again gray it out you'd be thankful for it and i always tell myself Think about how good you feel at the end of the workout. Like I've just come from a run, and like the endorphins. I was like, you know what? I've had a good start to my day. I've yeah. worked out. I've done. I've done the food shopping. After here, I'm gonna eat, have a shake, you know, and really crack on the rest of my day. And it just gets your day off 
to a good start and it gives me something to look forward to like in the mornings just get, getting up and oh I'm going to go work out I'm going to head down to the pitch it just gets me out of bed and it just gives, it just gives me some sort of structure because at the moment I'm, every day just seems to be Groundhog Day and all the days just really seem to be bl- blurred into one it's really tough I think the 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 bit that people need to realise is like the hardest part usually about a workout is starting it Getting up and Absolutely. doing it is usually the toughest bit. So if you can get that done and get that out of the way, then any workout is better than no workout. Exactly. So if you can just get up Even and do if it, it's that's probably the best thing. Yeah, 20 minute hit in your living room, a 15, 20 minute run, like you're just your body will just be better for it. It doesn't need to be like some if you've got they've got the money, I've seen some really crazy home gyms and I've mm. been super jealous. If you can afford that, happy days. But majority of the time. A 20, 25 minute run will suffice with a good, with a decent diet, happy days, and just grind grind it out. And April 12th, 6 a.m., I'll be outside the gyms. A hundred percent. I think a lot of us will be too. Um also through lockdown, I think it's tough as well, like with diets and sort of eating correctly. More so just because you're inside a lot of the time and then you yeah. snack and you, people do tend to snack. So for you, like what what's your sort of eating regime at the moment? What are you going through? like eating phase so, so at, the mo- at the moment I'm probably because of just how inactive I am my like my appetite is probably just falling off the cliff mm. like usually when I'm training rugby I'm probably eating north of three and a half thousand four thousand calories or just to keep just keep my weight basically yeah. the heart. by a moment I only need to eat around three thousand maybe between 2800 to 3000 calories 3.2 and that probably keeps me around the same-ish weight so in terms of eating clean, just again, just creating a meal plan, like just saying, okay, cool, for the week, I'm going to have this, 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 and this. And in there, like maybe you want what one meal in that week, you, you might treat yourself, you know, I'm not going to lie and say, yeah, I eat perfectly. I don't eat a takeaway. I had a takeaway last week. I had a dominant because I was like, you know what, go on, no, I want one. But oh, in the geez. grand scheme, of, is it going to do any damage to your diet? Absolutely not. I hate the word diet. Like I like mm. to say nutrition. You want to eat well and then like have yeah, good balance, nutrition. Balanced food, yeah. Yeah, because diet feels the word diet just comes across so restrictive and you okay. can't eat. You have to eat within that. Of course not. Like p- people, I do. I do eat KFC. I do eat McDonald's. I eat Domino's. But mm. I just find ways just to fit it in. Like, I can't eat a, a KFC every, every every week. But you know, what once a fortnight once every three weeks if I had KFC ah, I'm not going to lose sleep over it yeah it's fine I, th- I think also like you've got to take it from a standpoint you've got to look at what you you want to do with your body and then go from there like diet 100% I agree with you you say like the word diet is really restrictive and I think people have really bad like connotations of that word um, I think as you got to look at what you want to do as a person if you want to lose weight it just comes down to the fact you've got to eat less calories than um, yeah consuming it just comes down to numbers really at that stage but yeah. as you say you've got to be like comfortable with what you eat i think yeah i think we've, yeah, you hit the nail on the head like if, if you want to lose weight and vice versa if you want to gain size you either got to eat more or eat less it's not rocking science and i think especially with uh the fitness industry mm. like they've over, they've overcomplicated such a simple concept lose weight eat less gain weight, eat more. That, 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 there isn't a magic shake, there isn't a pill, a tablet, an exercise, a cardio routine. You know, if you're gonna, if you're gonna lose weight, be more active and eat less. If you wanna gain weight, if you wanna gain muscle, eat a bit more. You can, you know, not be as uh, restrictive, restrictive with your diet. So uh, yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there. 100% man. Um, so with your page and like, uh, the following that you've got and the content that you produce, like who's kind of like inspired you behind this? So do you follow anyone that gives you kind of ideas and wants you to make more content yourself? So like my page, I'd like to say in terms of people I've seen, I think I'm quite in a super, I mean, I'm quite niche in terms of mm. I'm, I, I'm, I, I'm an athlete. I, play sport it's not just i not i'm not just a guy that just goes to the gym to look good i there's, there's a reason right yeah there's an element of what i do needs to be to some degree 
translate needs to translate onto a pitch. Mm. But in terms of actual content and quality of con- content, there's a guy um, I follow called Lubumba, and in terms of his content and just the entire aesthetic of his page and the quality of the videos he's produced, that's where I want to go. Mm. And I want to have that element of professionalism. This ain't an am- this ain't amateur stuff. This ain't a guy that's just pumping out a load of yeah. rubbish. This is like sharing his life one two. What he's saying is informative. And free, what I produce is and it has some sort of entertainment value in it. People will be like, oh, I enjoy watching that and I've learned something at the same time. But that's probably the social media influence that I probably follow or I'm, I'm inspired by. But you definitely are, like, you have that unique selling point. Like all the factors that you just said about him, I kind of reciprocate that you like in yourself. So you're like, you, you, you are a professional athlete, I suppose. And like, your unique selling point is that like people don't aren't there are not many people like you, if you know what I mean. So you yeah. giving insight into your life is kind of like, wow, like this guy is really impressive. I want to try and be like him, if you get what I mean. So I think that's really great. So um kind of like wrapping up like in a kind of final question. So what are your aims for I know you kind of touched on wanting to get back into rugby a bit more, yeah. but when we exit lockdown, what are your aims like in the gym and outside of it? with your life and like your future? Um, for me, uh, outside lockdown, uh, obviously rugby, just getting ready for rugby. I went, realistically, I wouldn't be playing any games again until about September. So I have all that period of just like getting my body right, getting fitter. Uh, I probably want to lose a little bit of weight as well. Yeah. Just so I, I, like, I've lost a bit of weight and like my joints feel so much better for it. You know, being 121 kilos, yeah, you're, you're massive and stuff, but it's a lot of weight to carry you. It's a lot of load. So I probably want to lose a little bit of weight, um, hopefully be able to go away on, on holiday, stuff like that. Um, outside the outside the gym, I want to graduate. Uh, I want to get at least a 2-1 or a first in my degree, just because it gives me options. Once you, like, having that degree, it's just, the more options, the better. And the yeah. more I mean, you down the better I, I don't want to box myself here and say oh, I'm stuck here uh or I, I really want to grow the social media page I want to have like hit 10k on Instagram hit 10k on YouTube in the next five to six months it's probably it's gonna probably end up becoming a bit more full-time mm. like at the moment it's just something I do on the side but if I really want to kick on and actually like hold elevate it yeah and uh, this is going to be a way I, I make money and live my life and a, a form of living. I'm probably going to have to up the work rate and effectively treat it as if it's a full-time nine-to-five job. It doesn't feel like a job, but that's there. Like I said, it has to come with an element of professionalism. If people yeah. want to take you seriously, you need to bring that element of professionalism and, you know, you, you can't be an amateur um, with it. But there will be my aims at the moment, just graduating, continue growing the socials and head back in the gym and get ready for rugby. That's unreal, bro. I really think, I do really think I'm saying this genuinely. I think you've got a really good, unique selling point. And I do think that if you commit more time, like, and a lot, like your focus, I, I really think you'll, you'll, you'll elevate to the next level. I seriously think, I think you've got a really, like, cool, interesting life. I think it like it put it, give it some time and it will definitely kick off. So yeah, well done, mate. So thank oh, you for thank your time, John. I appreciate it a lot. No, um, thank thank you for having me. I don't really do these sort of things. I've never really done anything like this. I think especially in the last two and a half months, I, yeah. it's it's been crazy. Like, like yourself, Robbie Pass. I've been on the podcast. A lot of people are like I'm like older than me. This is actually. I, I might be sitting on something. It's just one of those things. You, have you seen that picture where like there's one guy that stops digging and another yeah. guy keeps digging? The dime is literally the just, just there. Just there. It's literally there. But like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much at that moment. Like this ain't the time to stop. This is the time you've got to keep gotta, grinding, bro. Keep grinding. Yeah, keep gotta, pushing. I'm, I, I could. Uh, I think I hold on a minute that this could be something big, but it, it's just. It's hard work, you know. It is hard work, but man, I'm happy for you. Keep on doing it. Keep on grinding through. I think I, I think I found your page on the Explore page on Instagram. Oh, crazy! I think that's why. I think maybe you're you're popping up a few more like 
keep on um keep on using hashtags and stuff definitely on your posts because that's a really yeah. good way to elevate it so yeah like before I, was, uh, it's the, I had to get rid of the element of um what's the word i'm looking for like i felt like i was too big for hashtags oh, okay you know, there's a, there's a there's a, there's a people don't like using hashtags they, they're, they're too arrogant you know people don't want to humble themselves you got to okay. use the hashtag yeah if you want to grow you got to use the hashtags it is what it is you got to play the game and i remember when i started using it you know your friends take the piss out of you mm. and everyone thinks like oh, you're just trying to be an influencer then bro you basically are i'm not gonna lie <laughs> <laughs> And two months later, when they're like, "Oh crap, he's actually got 1k on YouTube," I, yeah. I've re- I've recently hit over three thousand, like over three thousand followers on Instagram. It's like, "Oh, the minute it, it, it's firing, it's growing, it's growing." So it's just continuing to post that good, informative stuff, and uh, just keep going. Keep on, man, hundred percent. If you want to link your um socials, so what's your uh, YouTube? Um, so my YouTube is literally just my name, John Okafor. It's usually the first hit. Click it, have a look. I just post my je- my daily life, training, general chit chats. You know, it's just just my per- I just try and uh, put my personality out there. My Instagram is John Okafor underscore underscore. A bit more laid back, a bit more behind the scenes. What was like with Instagram stories and. I- I- Probably I post more frequently on there. YouTube is probably maybe once, twice a week. There, uh, probably three, four times a week. So uh, give me a follow, and if you have any questions, swing me a DM. I I'm pretty quick to reply, you know, and uh, like I don't think I don't think I'm too big to reply to anyone. If I see it, I'll dedicate my time to. It. I feel like every single message is important, and it's important to like connect with people. Perfect, mate. I appreciate it a lot.